The judge is reprimanding and instructing those two individuals who represent Amber Heard on how to conduct themselves properly in court and how to get their acts together. She's had to endure such a strange inquiry, and being the no-nonsense lady that she is, she's decided to call them herself and give them an earful of how to behave in court. Or at least that's what we hope she'll do. But honestly speaking, it's quite clear that she has not been amused by how Amber's lawyer has conducted himself in the last few minutes just by looking at her face. Look how impolite he was in the situation. It's almost as if he believes that he has the right to be impolite to this other attorney simply because they've been made to listen to anything his witness was discussing. The judge swiftly ruled in favor of the objector since she too could see that the man was acting in an impolite manner. However, this is not the first time that Amber's attorneys have behaved inappropriately in court. Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. Today, we'll be looking at how the new judge disciplines Amber Heard's lawyer. Yeah, you heard it right. So, let's start our video. When the judge has taken issue with something that Amber has said or done, Amber's counsel has engaged in a heated argument with the magistrate presiding over the case. It's not like they haven't expressed their disagreement with a proposal of their own either. This is why Johnny's crew has been objecting more which has made their inquiries and witnesses unavailable. It is clear from the expressions on their faces that this has not made them happy. My best guess is that it's because he holds a few important titles in the industry. The manner in which he interacted with Amber's lawyer was more respectful to him than it was with Camille. Or, it's possible that he intended to make it crystal clear to the jury that Camille had made it clear that she did not want his witness to testify in the case. Regardless of the causes of his unpleasant behavior, the results were the same. The judge who presided over the case did not put up with the behavior in question at any point during it. It is also very clear that Amber's attorneys are rather disorganized in their approach to the case. They had also been missing files and evidence during the whole of the trial, and it appears that they had also forgotten the evidence as well. This is another item that can be easily observed. The probe has developed into such a convoluted and chaotic situation as a result of the practically daily appearance of fresh details and the emergence of new enemies. And I wouldn't be wrong to point out the fact that of course, the two sides are not friendly with one another, but regardless of whether they're friends or enemies, they shouldn't show it in court to the jury because it might hurt their case. I don't think it's a stretch to say that neither of the camps is friendly with one another. Already, the judges had two separate communications with Amber's legal representation. In the first instance, it was to instruct Amber's female lawyer on the meaning of objection and hearsay, and in the second instance, it was to remind them to keep their composure and be respectful in court. During the final hearing of the Johnny vs. Amber defamation trial, Judge Penny Oscarade gave Amber Heard's attorney, Elaine Bredehoff, a no-nonsense treatment. On Friday, the legal teams representing Heard and Depp met in a courtroom in Virginia Fairfax County to examine the prospects of a $10.35 million settlement that has been reached between the parties concerned. A day after Heard was victorious over Depp, a correspondent named Anjanette Levy who was present at the hearings observed that the judge was stern towards Elaine. This was in response to Elaine's disparaging comments that the jury had made. Judge A never puts up with any foolishness. Today, she was much more adamant and it appeared as though she did not care one bit about what Elaine Bredehoff had to say. After that, I inquired of Elaine whether she would come outside given that her camera was situated there and whether she had anything to contribute to the conversation. She declined my request in a courteous manner. At a later time, an Instagram user published a comment from Judge Ascarate in which she insults Elaine once more. She responded to Elaine's request for a brief timetable by stating, I am the chief judge of the court, and that's how it goes, despite the fact that no such schedule existed. Prior to the jury reaching a verdict, Elaine had previously labeled the panel as being biased and infected with social media discussion. During her interview on the Today Show, she disclosed the information in question. There, she started by suggesting that the results had been tampered with, and she said, absolutely. The jurors were instructed to not look at social media, but how could anyone not be aware of what's going on in the world today? Every night, they would return home. They're members of families. Their families are active on several social media platforms. Because of the judicial conference, we were given a 10-day vacation in the middle of the proceedings. There's no possibility that they could not have been swayed by it in any way, shape, or form. It was a terrible experience. And that's all for today's video. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments section down below. I hope that you found this video interesting, and if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the following video with some more of the latest updates, and until then, stay tuned!